So now we're on the water and we've got a few things to talk about while we're underway and we're boating. Um, first thing I want to talk about is a boater's education and safety course. And I'm going to ask each of you to complete one of these and show me the, the certificate that shows you've completed it. Why is this important? Well, safety is the number one issue. We want you to be safe out there. Um, also, these courses give you practical skills. So, and they're gonna to touch on things that I'm not gonna be able to talk about in here, things like uh, how to use a marine radio. And they're also just gonna present a lot of the same information in a different way, that's good for you. Also, many of you who are taking this class are going to be professionals in the field. And people are gonna ask you about it. And even though you're not a conservation officer or you're not a law enforcement person, People are going to ask you about these things because they're going to see that you're a government official working on a boat. Um, you need to be an expert in this. So those are all good reasons to take a course. Probably the best one you can take is the Coast Guard's uh, safety course, boating and safety course. And this is a, a classroom and it goes over several weeks um, and it's very intense. It's probably a lot more than what you need if you're just going to be working um, you know, inland in freshwater. But this is probably the best one if you want to take a really intense course. Um, there are some good ones that are online that get you a lot of good information. This Boat Ed is a, a good one that I found. Um, it does cost 30 bucks, but you only pay after you pass the course. So you can take the whole course and take the test and keep taking it until you know your stuff and you pass the test. And then if you want to get the certificate to prove that you passed it, then you have to pay the money. Um, that's a good one. Um, a, the one I'm going to ask you to take for the class is the Boat US online course. Now, some of you have had my other classes and have probably already taken this, and so just show me the certificate. That's fine. Um, this is a good course. I like the way it's structured. It covers a lot of the important material you need to know for a boater safety course. It's online and it's free. And not only is it free, it's recognized by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife um, as a, they approved it as a safety course. So this is why we're going to use this one. Um, so the link is given here. It's also given in the Canvas course. Um, so for my class, I want you to take it, pass it, and then email me the certificate to show that you've passed it. Um, and also our exams are going to have questions from this. So, you know, this is a good starting point. It's got a lot of information that I want you to know. It's also something good for you to just be able to put on your resume, to put on your CV. Um, you can also get a break in your boat insurance sometimes if you've shown you've taken one of these courses. So um, if you're going to be a, a, a professional, it's a good idea to have this. Okay, in Kentucky, let's talk about registration and license. You don't have to have a boat license. Um, so uh, like you have to have a driver's license you don't have to have a license like that to operate a boat if you're an adult there are different rules for young kids you do have to have a boat registration or you know license plates so it's like you don't have to have a driver's license but you do have to have the license plates so your boat has to be registered um, now if it's a state boat um, if it's a work boat those don't have registration numbers on them, but any other craft has to have it. Um, also, unpowered boats tend to not have to be registered. Canoes, kayaks, rafts, those don't have to have registration. Sailboats, I have a question mark. It says all mechanically powered vessels used primarily in the state of Kentucky must have a Kentucky registration. And so a sailboat is not the sail is not mechanically, but they all have an outboard that you use at some point. And so I think sailboats have to be registered as well. Just a good idea. Um, now the registration for a boat in Kentucky means you have to have those uh, decals with letters on the side and a current registration sticker on the side but it also means you have to have the registration paperwork or the certificate of registration and so you need to make a copy of this on waterproof paper jam it somewhere in the boat jam it in the um, glove box of your truck whatever but technically you need to have that certificate as well to be legal um, now in Kentucky you don't necessarily you don't have to have license plates for trailers in Kentucky. Um, 
and so you don't technically have to have your trailer licensed but it's not a bad idea because if you go out of state other states you do have to have a license plate and so if you're in another state and they see you don't have plates you might get pulled over and you would technically be legal but it's just a hassle that you don't want to deal with so um, technically you don't have to have plates in Kentucky but it's probably not a bad idea um, when you're looking at a boat pay attention to the capacity of the boat every boat has to have a capacity plate on there that talks about how many people it can hold how much weight it can hold and the maximum horsepower and so if you buy a boat and it doesn't have this you need to get it because you're illegal also realize that these recommendations are in calm seas so in the best condition this is the maximum but in rough seas or in rough water you're probably well below what this maximum is okay I want you to be aware of considerate boating. I want you to be aware of other people on the lake. Um, one of the things that's a pet peeve of mine is trash. It's very easy for trash to blow out of a boat. And if you're out on a lake at any point, you see trash everywhere and it makes the place look terrible and it's inconsiderate. So just be aware that you're open. And so any trash is going to blow out once you take off down the lake. So stow it. Um, be aware of aquatic nuisance species and as biologists we should be doubly aware of this but this is how a lot of things a lot of vegetation zebra mussels um, this also has to do with bait bucket transfer be aware of all the aquatic nuisance species and how they can be transported in your boat in your bilge on your trailer and that means wiping down your trailer that means inspecting for vegetation that means being doubly aware when you're in a lake that has these species so you don't transport them to other systems obey all no wake this is not only considerate but this is also the law um, but when you're around other boats you want to go nice and slow don't get them stirred up especially if they're fishing no wake means the slowest possible speed that you can go at and still make headway so it doesn't necessarily mean idle speed because if the wind's blowing or you got a big boat idle speed you might not be able to go in the direction you want to go but it's the minimum speed to go in the direction that you want to go okay um, there are some other safety things again that will be covered in your online safety course but i want to emphasize here the first is there's no such thing as a right of way on the water so in driver's ed you learn about right of way if you're in an intersection who has the right of way that's a legal concept that doesn't really um, extend to the water mostly because there's no lines painted on the water and so you can't really have a right of way <clears throat> on the water you have this concept of stand on versus give way <clears throat> so when two boats are interacting you have to think about which one is stand on and which one is give way. What does this mean? Stand on means you don't vary your speed or direction. You just stand on. You keep going the way you're going. All right. Give way means you must avoid collision. So you must vary either speed and or direction to avoid colliding. So if two boats are interacting, one is supposed to just keep doing what they're doing and the other one that's the stand on boat the give way boat is supposed to do what it has to do to avoid the collision that's the concept that we're looking at here if you're the stand on boat you don't want to vary speed or direction because you make it much more difficult for the give way boat okay if boats are meeting head on they're both give way right there is no stand on boat they both need to change speed and or direction to avoid the collision and traditionally you should turn to the right and if they both turn to the right you should be fine but that's not written in stone and you don't know that everyone's going to do this um, and so you just need to be really careful and pay attention to what the other person is doing but you both have the obligation to move no one is stand on here um, one of the things that you'll learn in your online course is that there are sound signals that go with each of these situations and blasts on the horn you can give to let the other boat know what you're trying to do. Um, we're not going to cover those there. Nobody uses them um, on freshwater lakes. Um, 
it's a good thing for you to know. If everybody used them, it would probably be a little bit better. But um, honestly, it's just not something that people do on Kentucky Lake or in any of the lakes around here. So we don't mess with it. But in your online course, you need to, to learn those to, get, to pass that online course. Um, now, if your one boat is overtaking another boat, if you're both going in the same direction but one is faster, the slower boat is stand on. The overtaking boat, the faster boat, is give way. So if you're coming up on somebody who's slower than you, you have to adjust to go around them, and they are supposed to maintain speed and direction. If you're crossing, the boat on the right is stand on, the boat on the left is give way. And so the stand on, the boat on the right is just going to keep going. The one on the left is going to have to adjust and obviously go behind the other boat. You don't want to adjust your course to go in front of the other boat. That wouldn't make any sense. That's not how you avoid a collision. Um, one of the things that will help you with this, especially at night, is that um, you can look at the bow light. And so the bow light has a red and a green section. Red is on the port, green is on the starboard. And this is by design. And so if you think about it, look at these boats here. The boat that's on the right, the boat that is stand on, when it looks at the other boat, it sees green. Green means go. And so the boat on the right sees green, knows which direction, and knows that, that it should go, and it, has, it is a stand-on boat. Now, if you look at the boat that's give way here, the boat on the left, when it's looking at the other boat, it's going to see the red light on that other boat. Red means stop. Red means you are on the give way position and you have to adjust. So think about this when you're looking at other boats, and especially at night, you can tell what direction the boat is by looking at the red or green, and that's going to tell you are you stand on or are you give way. Okay. Um, we often interact with barges on Kentucky Lake and on the river. You need to stay alert around them. They're big. If you're up close, they can't see you. They obviously can't stop. They can't maneuver. Barges are always stand on for that reason. And so if you're anywhere near a barge, you have the responsibility to give way and avoid the collision. Now, on the river, a downstream barge has right of way to an upstream barge. And I think this is like one of the few concepts where there is this idea of right of way on the water. And that's because a downstream barge is much harder to control than an upstream barge. But unless you're driving a barge, this is not relevant to you. What's relevant to you is if you're around a barge, you are responsible to stay away from them. Just stay away from them. They kick up a big wake. Um, they can't stop. They can't see you. Avoid them. Now, when you're navigating, you need to know the channel markers, and there's some pretty standard ways that channels are marked. This is especially true on Lake Kentucky Lake at Winter Pool. You need to know where the deep water is. The channel is marked with red nun boys and green can boys. This is a nun boy. You see it's red. It's shaped like a habit. That's why they call it a nun boy. The can boy... Whoops is green and it looks just like a can and they're always placed in the same position and that is the red buoys are on the right when you're heading upstream the green ones are on the left when you're heading upstream and the way you remember this is red right returning if you're returning from the sea that means you're going upstream that means the red ones should be on your right or on your starboard Okay, now this can be confusing on Kentucky Lake because we have the main channel running up Kentucky Lake, but then you have all these other uh, side channels and tributaries that are running in. And if you look at this map, you can zo you'll have to zoom in on this on your computer to see it very well. I'll try and highlight what I'm talking about here. So here we're looking at some maps of Kentucky Lake. And for some reason, the red buoys are painted purple on these maps. But you see the green buoys and the red buoys. And they're like you would expect. As you're going upstream or south in the main body, the red buoys would be on the right of your boat. And that's in the main channel, which is pretty easy. But in Kentucky Lake, you got a lot of side channels. 
And like here at Jonathan Creek, you've got the side channel running into Jonathan Creek, and you can see that the green and the red buoys are still similar to what they are on the main channel. Now, whenever you turn into Jonathan Creek, you see there's only one line of buoys running into Jonathan Creek, and that's pretty typical because it's not very wide. And it's the red buoys here, and this is perpendicular to the main channel, so you're going upstream in a different direction. And what's really messed up is right here at the mouth, you can see how the reds and the greens all get kind of cootered up. And that's what's difficult about Kentucky Lake is these side channels. Here's a different part of the lake, and again, if we look at the main body of the lake, we can see the red and green buoys are, as you would expect, reds on the right as we're going upstream, and you can see the line that indicates the flow direction here. And you also see the side channel that's down at the bottom, and the red and green buoys are in the same orientation as they're parallel to the main channel. But if we slide into Blood River down here, again, the side channels or these coves are kind of perpendicular to the flow, and there's really only one row of buoys running into Blood River, and it's a different color. These are the green buoys, and so they kind of tell you which side you should be running your boat on. And here at the mouth, again, it's the cootered up mess of which direction the buoys go. And so this is pretty typical of Kentucky Lake, and you just need to get used to it. Um, when you're on the water, it's pretty easy to see from one buoy to the next which direction you're supposed to go. Okay, um, on the lake and on the rivers, you also have something called a crossing day mark. These are usually mounted on the shoreline, and this is when the channel meanders from one side to the other. The crossing day mark tells you that the channel is hitting the shore at the day mark, but then it's turning and going to the other shore. This is what a crossing day mark looks like. They often have the river mile um, marked on them as well. Okay, um, some other general tips for when we're out on the water. Of course, we always watch the weather. Uh, it's very dangerous to be out on the lake in bad weather. On Kentucky Lake, it's especially so if the wind picks up, you always want to pay attention to the waves. If you've got a wind coming from the north or the south, you know, there's a lot of fetch in those directions. And so it can really put a lot of energy into those waves. In my experience, it seems that the waves tend to pick up around lunchtime, and so it starts to blow around 11 or 12, and continues to blow until later in the day. So even though you leave in the morning, it seems calm, don't assume it's gonna stay that way. Be ready for rough water. Um, also, pay attention to storms. If you see lightning, lightning is a no-go. You just don't mess around on the lake. If there's any kind of lightning, turn around and head back in. Um, other general tips when you're boating, get in the habit of constantly checking that water pump, constantly looking for the telltale stream of water coming out of the back. If that water pump breaks down, you want to know it right away. Some of our boats have warning horns, and if the motor starts to heat up, you'll hear a buzzing, and the motor will also often throttle itself down to low RPMs if it does have a warning horn. That's also true for some of our boats if the oil pressure gets low. But not all outboards have them. You can't count on that. You need to get into the habit of constantly checking that water stream, especially in like an electrofishing boat where you're up in the shallows and you might suck things into the intakes and you might clog up those intakes. You always got to be watching that. Rule of thumb for gas, of course, just go out with a full tank every time. And you want to use a third out, a third in, a third in reserve. That means you want to use a third of your gas to get to where you're going. And that should give you about a third of your gas to get you back to the ramp. And you've got a third as a buffer. You don't want to go a half and a half because if the wind changes or, or something happens and you use half your gas to get where you're going, then you're probably not going to have enough gas to get back. So a third, a third, a third. Also, something else I like people to do, usually we have a couple of tanks. You want to switch between those tanks. You don't want to just use the same tank and keep refilling it and then have that one tank sitting there all summer in reserve. That gas will get stale, that gas will get water in it. 
just switch between tanks and fill up the empty one every time and that helps to keep fresh gas in the boat. Um, when we're on the lake we'll practice proper trim. Not everybody knows how to trim a motor. Not all motors have power trim and tilt. If you do have trim you want to trim it all the way down to help like when you're backing off the trailer it gives you more power. Um, it helps you to, to turn the boat quicker. Um, but of course if you're in shallow water obviously you need to trim the motor up so you don't hit the prop on the bottom and you don't suck things into the impellers. When so you, to maximize control you want to trim the motor down and maximize power. So if you're doing something like pulling a trawl or something you want to have that motor trimmed all the way down or straight up and down it gives you the maximum power. When you're going fast you want to trim the motor up or tilt it up to maximize speed. And so once if you've got a boat and you're up on plane and you tilt that motor back that helps to change the the resistance on it. it helps to bring the boat up a little bit more and that can actually increase the RPMs and you can go a little bit faster. It's actually more efficient but there's a, a fine line there. If you go too far the boat starts to porpoise and starts to dig its, its nose in. So know your boat. You'll learn how to do this from boat to boat. Um, this is the trim button. Up trims it up or tilts the motor out. Down trims the motor down or tilts it deeper into the water. Um, I've mentioned several times winter pool. I want to mention it again on Kentucky Lake. Um, it's a very different lake at winter pool. There's a lot of shallow areas up there. Really pay attention. Really watch your fish finder. Really know where you're at. Be careful so you don't hit some of those shoals at winter pool. Um, another general suggestion is just watch for idiots. Um, most of the people uh, on the lake, I don't say most of the people, but during certain times there are a lot of people on the lake who don't know what they're doing. Most, I will say that most of the people on the lake are not in the boat as much as you are. Now there's a lot of fishermen that would be and I understand that but there's a lot of recreational boaters, there's a lot of people out there in jet skis, a lot of people that's the only day they're out on the lake. Um, you just can't, there's a lot of people drinking out there. You cannot assume that everybody knows what they're doing so you just keep your head on a swivel and just stay away from everyone else and that's a good tip. Okay so once you're done, once you're getting back to the ramp there's a few things I'd like to suggest. Um, when you put the trailer in you're often better off not backing it as far in as you did to get the boat off the trailer. Um, it seems to load the boat a little bit better if you don't go in quite all the way and then you crank the boat up on the trailer. It's, it tends to sit on the trailer better. Also if you back the trailer in too far the boat can come in too fast and it can slam up against the bow support and bend it again from experience I've done this. Um, I like to run the boat up on the trailer and then use the winch to pull it up. Uh, you can use the motor to push it up and that usually works. That can, that can be considered inconsiderate because if everybody does that that erodes the soil, erodes the sediments from behind the ramp and you get a drop off on the ramp. Honestly it's one of those things that everybody does. Um, so you know uh, it's probably nice to not do that to just use the winch but also if you use the winch it tends to make the boat sit up on the trailer better. Uh, don't forget to trim up the motor so that it doesn't drag when you're coming out of the ramp. Uh, also make sure that all electronics are off. It's easy to forget uh, to turn off the fish finder or to turn off something um, and so then if that's running the whole time your boat's going to run your battery down and next time you go out your battery's dead. So turn off all your electronics um, some of our boats have a master kill switch and this is a good idea. It looks something like this. It's just mounted back by the battery and when you're done you turn this off. This just kills all connections to the battery and so if you forgot and left something on or if you've got a, a short somewhere this keeps your battery from being drained while it's just sitting in the shed and so you'll have a fresh battery next time you go out. Okay, so that is some tips about boating and let me know if you got any questions.